Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. This is your Smackdown reaction and review for May 28th, 2021. Okay, so starting the show off with the Street Profits and the Usos was a very smart idea. You, we should start these shows off. If you hear my child in the background, you know. But we should start these shows off very strong. And so far, I like all the promo between the, those two. Um, it was great to see Jimmy and Jay come out together as the Usos. Um, I missed their entrance. Um, and the Street Profits, I feel like the Street Profits are the probably the best team to bounce off of because the Usos are great. The Street Profits, although they've fallen tremendously, they are still one of the best talking and charismatic teams out there. So hopefully this match should be good. I did like how Montez Ford was uh, taking us down memory lane with the face paint and the the old entrance of the Usos. I mean, I've always been an Uso fan. Um, since they've turned heel or changed up their whole look, I'm kind of loving the look. So I don't know if I really miss the face paint. And I don't think the twins miss the face paint either. So, you know, it was just a nice little dig slash, you know, memory. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping this match will be good. It is SmackDown, so. They'll probably cut a lot out. We'll probably get some Roman. I'm hoping not, but this is WWE, so we know what's going to happen. By the way, I'm giving you guys natural hair today. No wigs. Um, and I just threw some hoops on. So, very minimal makeup. But uh, I hope you guys like. I've been trying to protect my hair. Um for a while so i hope you guys like um i'm not used to how it's coming off on camera but hmm, this is about wrestling right you guys didn't come to see what i look like and what my hair looks like and what i'm wearing right why do i feel like jay is going to turn on jimmy not turn like like they're gonna break up the usos but like turn like he's gonna leave him in the middle of the match or something because Roman is gonna sneeze and Jay is gonna have to run and go get a tissue. Like, I just feel like that's gonna happen. I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping we get a really, really good match between these two. But I just feel like there's some bullshit afoot, if you know what I mean. We literally just came from commercial break and now we're in another commercial. Two commercials within five minutes. Like, how is anyone at least the people that are watching from home like me how are we supposed to enjoy the show like this is making me want to go to the kitchen and get some oreos when i should be 1000 percent invested into this match bullshit right already and yet another commercial i literally looked at the time with the last commercial it was 8 22. It is now 8.30. Literally, we got eight minutes of wrestling before we went to another commercial. Like, they want me to turn. They want me to turn. They want me to go out in the living room and play with my kid for a little bit before her bath. They don't want me to watch this show. They don't want me to review this show. They don't want me to give you guys con what little content that I give you. They don't want me to do that. They want me to hate wrestling. You know why? Because Vince hates wrestling. And Vince hates us for liking wrestling. So therefore, he tries his best and succeeds at making us hate the show. Good job. My twin babies won right outcome because as charism as charismatic and as great as the sheep prophets are they've kind of fallen way down the totem pole so they can talk all they want um montez will forever be entertaining but the usos jimmy's back and the usos will rightfully take their place as the number one tag team it's quite simple 
I don't know what the street poppers thought, but the Usos winning was the right outcome. So I'm one for one tonight. I just have one question. Who the fuck thought that that was a great style? And I'm referring to Dolph Ziggler's hair. I mean, he's known for doing whatever he wants. And usually I don't mind because I know you guys are going to hate me, but I love Dolph Ziggler. So, and of course, we go from one bad hairstyle to a whole bad wardrobe. And excuse the sirens, I live in New York, so. Um, Natalia and Tamina. Great. Um, I know Tamina's been having her, you know, feel good moment because she's finally won the title, but the wardrobe is. Ugh. Um, Liv Morgan is on my screen, so I'm a happy sailor. Um, but I mean, the Ride Squad has has been and is probably the only legit woman's tag team in this whole company and the fact that they've never been champions um and they constantly lose is disrespectful as fuck so i think if tamina and natalia are going to be transitional um champions i think the next title holders should be the riot squad and if not someone needs to walk up to vince mcmahon and slap him dead in his face rather punch him that's that's just how I feel because what's the point of having titles if you have no legit teams to hold them? I mean, the tag team division is gonna forever be a problem in this company. These braids that <laughs> Tamina has, Jesus Christ, like just Jesus Christ, they just look horrible. Like God. <sighs> They're distracting, if anything, but I'm paying attention to the match, I swear. So, the Riot Squad loses again. I mean, what else am I supposed to say that hasn't already been said? I, it's, it's just really no use. It's just really no use. Liv should just follow up with Dallas and get the fuck out of this company. That's it. That's all I have to say. As far as this match, didn't really care for it. From Liv Morgan to Bianca Belair, won't God do it? Just won't he do it? Like <sighs> Bianca Belair, she's so fine. That's my girl. Who is she wrestling? Because if it's Bailey. What the fuck? There's nobody else they could have got to wrestle Bianca besides the blonde blow up doll. Bianca. Leave it to Michael Cole to literally shit all over the result of the match. I mean, was it ever in question? Carmella's not beating Bianca Belair, even if it's a non-title match, even with interference with Bailey. I mean, it would make no sense. I could see it happening, but it would make no sense. But Belanca, Michael Cole is such a fucking idiot. I don't understand how he's still working for this company. You get rid of Tom Phillips, who had a solid 10 years in the company. I mean, he's no Jim Ross. He's no whatever you know what i mean he's no legend in the commentary business but he was really wasn't that bad he was way more tolerable than michael cole so the fact that michael cole still has a job i mean and each week i am reminded that seth rollins is very capable of topping his previously horrendous choices ensues, i.e. what we have tonight.
like I said in my last video, does he just Google worst suits ever? Because... Okay. Cardi B. Oh, God. It's funny. It's just... Eddie. I wonder if Vince really knows the meaning behind if it's up, if it's up, then it's stuck. I'm pretty sure he has no idea what the song really means and you're playing it on one of your promos. Oh, I remember what I was trying to say because Seth Rollins just completely threw off what I was thinking. But as cute as this Rey Mysterio and Dominic little tag team first ever father and son, when you hurt, I hurt. It may be cute to the to the kiddos, but it is kind of cringe to me. I mean, I know their father and son don't come for me, but it's just this goody two shoes just is not working for me. I'm much more of a heel girl, if you can't tell. So I'm like in my head, like back there where all the crazy thoughts are. I'm like, when is Dominic gonna turn on his father? Like, I could just write that storyline. It's perfect. Seth Rollins and Cesaro remain probably the only thing going for this show, aside from the Roman and Jay and Jimmy family bloodline thing going. And that's not saying much, because that's going to run its course very soon. But, I mean, I'm invested. I think Cesaro and Seth Rollins work really well together. Um, I'm pretty sure they could both wrestle each other in an empty arena and it'd be great. Because Seth Rollins is a douchebag and Cesaro is just the unsung hero, right? I'm invested. Probably just as much invested as Seth is at finding a terrible suit every week. That really wasn't the best Seth Rollins promo. I mean, Cesaro's obviously not there. Or maybe he is there and he's just backstage, but suspend your belief for a minute. Um, Cesaro's not there, so Seth had to go out there on his birthday and sell us on this feud continuing. And honestly, I didn't pay any attention to what he was saying. I mean, the suit was bright. It was very bright. Um, but if Cesaro is not there for him to go back and forth, like, I'm really not interested in just hearing Seth cut a promo in this new character that he's supposed to be doing. Like, what is this character? Like, are we supposed to care? Because I know, um, Kevin Owens has his fans and he also has his haters, whatever you want to call him. And I know he said himself that he doesn't really care if he does or doesn't win the IC title, but it's... <sighs> I'll just put it like this. The pandemic has helped a lot of people. Bailey, for instance. But it's also hurt a lot of people. Kevin Owens, for instance. Um, I really don't care for following this new gimmick. I don't. But just... What happened to Kevin Owens? I mean, and now this random feud with Aleister Black, who, who's been stuck in the closet for how long now? Like, I don't mean that literally, physically. It's just hard to care. Give it to Kevin Owens for really driving the point home. See what I did there? I should take this on the road. But uh, the match ended just as quickly as it started. I still didn't care. And now yeah, Roman Reigns. Is it 10 o'clock yet? Well, what a segment between uh, Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. Roman was sounding a bit like a bitter ex-girlfriend but he turned it around 
and he hit on probably what people were saying when the twins were putting on the face paint like oh which one's jay which one's jimmy but they're definitely not saying that now so i mean it's all just a little plot to get in further into jay's head right or am i thinking too deep into it maybe i shouldn't because i don't want to hurt myself this show was written for idiots obviously i would fancy myself not an idiot but that was a really good segment just it it's roman further getting into the middle of jay and jimmy which is great but sorry i had a phone call but um yeah it's, it was a good segment i mean as much as i want to see my twins together always and holding some gold eventually i just uh, it's it's hard to get like a you know what i mean like a roman's doing what he's doing and he's good at it but you want jimmy and jay to be together so it's like uh, you know it was really nice how he touched on oh when you're with me you're in the main event but your brother comes back and you're in the opening match i thought that was a really really nice spin but you know i just don't want roman to break up my twins if they turn heel, that's fine. But they need to be either face, heel, whatever, but they need to be together. That's all I want. That's all I'm asking, and I don't think I'm asking for too much. Okay, Vince? Thank you. Raise your hand if you forgot that Chad Gable and Otis were not only a tag team, but still employed by the WWE. I definitely did. And the fact that Nakamura has to wrestle these losers. And it hurts my heart to say, because Chad Gable is fucking fantastic. But you wouldn't know. The past couple of years, he has been not even a jobber, worse than a jobber. Shorty G, yeah, that was a thing. Um, I know they're probably just killing time until the tag match, but... I'm ready to go bathe my kid and get ready for dynamite. I don't know what that says, but that's just how I'm feeling, honestly. That was my face during that whole match and the ending segment with Baron Col Corbin. See, excuse me, Baron Corbin. Um, speaking of people that I'm surprised are still employed by this company, Baron Corbin, and I used to be a fan of his. And I'm gonna say that. You know why I'm gonna keep saying that? Because at one point, Baron Corbin was tailor-made for the main roster, in my, in my opinion, the, the look, the whole lone wolf thing, his finisher, his entrance, but <laughs> it's just crazy what the change of a theme song, cutting hair, and a stupid gimmick can do. Then again, I knew it. I knew it. Once they showed Rey Mysterio sitting there, I guess we're supposed to assume he was praying because normally he does that before his matches. But I knew once they focused on the fact that he was praying or getting ready, doing his warm up and told Dominic, I'll be there in a minute. I knew I was like, they're going to drop a couch on him or a house or whatever, something on him. And then Dominic's going to come out, wrestle the first half of the match by himself. And just when we think that Dominic is not going to be able to handle Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Miraculously, Rey Mysterio comes. He triumphs down the ramp and he helps his son and they retain the titles. I literally just wrote the end of the entire show. Literally. In five seconds. That. Or. It was. Jey Uso, Roman Reigns, Jey Uso on behalf of Roman Reigns. All right, 
seriously i mean that wouldn't be you know such a bad idea that'd be a nice little twist um it kind of just eliminates Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode completely out the equation but uh yeah I mean if that was the case I wouldn't be mad at that but still I'm not remotely interested in this match at all so I just wanted to be honest with you guys so there's literally eight minutes left in the show um the match just came back from commercial so I expect a lot of fast counting a lot of uh a lot of like quick moves and everything is gonna go fast because this company still in the thousands of years that it's been on air they still don't know how to manage their time with a two-hour show let alone a three-hour show so um i'm just gonna do a bold prediction and say that the mysterios retain um, do we get some interference from the Usos? I doubt it. But if we do, I will be surprised. Um, so in my head, it will be the Usos versus the Mysterios next week. And like I said in the past, they're transitional champions, which is okay because the rightful team to hold the titles is the Usos. End of story. So, um, that was my uh smackdown review and reaction and i hope you guys enjoyed um let me know what you think and i will hopefully see you guys for for double or nothing on sunday i love you please remember to like comment and subscribe and i will see you later